Now we're going to do, we're going to finish up the exercises for chapter four. And then we're going to do Mandarin and IPA. And I asked you to please finish your exercises for chapter four because last time a lot of you were not very exhaustive. You only listed some of the possibilities that were asked for in the exercises. So I hope that you did some more work on that and added more things because there were a lot more possibilities than just the few some of you offered anyway. And I need you to think about that for you to understand the exercise better. You need to know which combinations produce a lot more words than others. That was really one of the big points of the exercise. Another thing I want to share with you very quickly, some of you are also on my regular Facebook, so you followed some of this. And an issue came up over a pronunciation list that I'm on. There's a list of pronunciation teachers. And they did a pun on the two words ball and ball. Are these homophones? Are these two words homophones? Homophones means tongyinzi. Are they homophones? Are these two words homophones? Anybody? Yes or no? Not sure. Amy says yes. Okay, rest of you? Now wondering. Are they homophones? Yes? No? Why not, Ruby? I think the first one is ball, and the second one is ball. What's the difference? <laughs> Those two did sound the same to me. This is interesting because ever since I started learning and teaching phonetics, I've always thought that these transcriptions They have the same transcription, right? Chiu and hao tao da ku. That's what it means. I always thought this was a conventional lie that they sometimes teach you in school. Just like an, yin, they use the same symbol. That's another lie. Yi an, zemu hui bian yin, yi an si yan, but nobody, you don't say yan. So that's like, what I mean by a conventional lie. It's a lie, but they teach it in school and everybody acts like they believe it. And then we forget that it was a lie. Yi an does not make yin, it makes yan. Well, it's an allophone. But they don't tell you then it's an allophone. They just tell you yi an is yin, and you say, but that's yan. You go, no, shut up, just learn it. Isn't that what happens in school a lot of the time? Just shut up, just learn it. Well, I call those conventional lies. It has its own truth because, like I said, it makes an allophone of a, ah, of an. But it's not how you actually say it, and people normally don't tell you about allophones. Well, this is an example of what I always considered a conventional lie, and even teaching phonetics as I do, I just taught the conventional lie because everybody says it, all the textbooks say it. And in fact, the majority of English speakers agree that thus these two are homophones. Most people do not distinguish, and that's fine. I'm not criticizing anybody who doesn't distinguish the two. That's by far the majority of English speakers. Probably all Brits, maybe all Brits, at least speakers of standard British definitely do not distinguish those two. Most American speakers don't distinguish them either. However, it happens that I distinguish them. And I just brought up the question, since there was a pun on ball and ball, I thought, well, those aren't really perfect homophones. So I asked the people on this list, all the people are, probably most of the people anyway, are pronunciation teachers. I said, are these homophones for everybody or do some of you distinguish? Everybody said, of course, they're homophones. And then Professor John Wells, we're all familiar with by now, right? One of the top phoneticians in the world. He wrote me a letter and he said, I don't think there's any native English speaker who distinguishes between those two words. I said, I do. He said, why didn't somebody write about this before? That was his reaction. Other people 
Some of them tended to be dismissive. That's a book Of course, they are homophones. But Professor Wells was the only one who said, if there are some speakers who distinguish between these two, why has nobody studied this and written it up before? So one little point I want to make in this story that I'm sharing with you is that was the reaction of somebody who wants to learn, rather than somebody who is being, <laughs> I don't want to put this in an unkind way, instead of somebody who has a very set idea of the world and is going to impose their set way of thinking on, every, on everybody. In fact, we all do this. But one thing that you are supposed to learn in university, in, in your education in general, is you should be open to new ideas. It's really hard for our brains to adjust when something goes against something, especially since something that we've learned since we were children. That's really, really hard, isn't it? To change something that we believed as children. For example, when Alex was asking me about an, he said, actually, I think that's a phoneme. Why is that not a phoneme? Well, I said it's because it's got, or he, no, actually, he thought it was a diphthong. I said, well, because why? Why is it not a diphthong? Why is this not a diphthong? Well, a diphthong has two parts, but. The two parts, it's the pronunciation is uh, neither of them is a grunt. Because the two parts in its pronunciation is, that is equal important, are equal important. E important. Neither of them is a glide, you're right. But we need to go down to something more basic than that. Right. That's the obvious thing. It's a consonant. Right? The second part is a consonant. So of course it's not a shuang yin. And then he said, oh, the definition of a shuang yin means two vowel. Oh, then he accepted it. But the way he thought, although it seems strange to an English speaker who studied phonetics, is there some kind of logic in the way he thought? Is it understandable that he would think that? Yes, because? Because what? The ah doesn't appear by itself in this form. It's true, but not only that. It should be obvious there's an end there. Of course, it cannot be a diphthong. But his thinking is not so strange. It's understandable because? How many sounds does this look like to your eyes? One sound, right? So, Digu, you guys believe that this is one sound because you learned it as one syllable in school when you were very young. Is that right? For you to change your mind, to say that this is not a shua mu yin, this is two separate sounds, that takes a lot of work because your brain is used to seeing this as one sound. Is that right? So it's not really so strange. It's things that we have believed all our lives are really hard to accept. So the point is that when you hear something new, rather than dismissing it, always give it a chance. It's not the way I do it, maybe, but tell me what, tell me what you have to say. Tell me what your observation is, and then I will think about it. Everybody remember that. If you don't put it in your notes, note it in your head. Try not to have knee-jerk reactions to things and say, well, that can't be true. That's ridiculous. I've never heard of such a thing, so it's wrong, right? Isn't it easy to react like that when you're so sure you are right? We all do this. All of us do this. But we have to fight it really hard. Now, some things are so crazy, we think, well, I don't have to give them a second chance. The world is not flat. I'm not going to give you a second chance. But for many things, it's not so straightforward. So always hear people out because when you know that you're telling the truth, and Darren Shaw, how do you feel when that happened to you? As soon as you hear that from Darren, and you know you're telling the truth, what did you feel? Has that happened to all of you? I believe it has happened to all of us. Somebody says, it happens to all of us, but we know we're telling the truth. How do we feel when that happens and nobody will listen to us? And they'll just say, well, you're just a kid. What do you know? How do we feel? We feel really, really bad, right? And you think, like, just listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. I didn't make it up. It's really true. Well, 
it, it's not just children with whom this happens. It happens to all of us. And we are often the perpetrators. We're the ones who say, ah, that's ridiculous. And we make somebody else feel bad because actually they have something to say. And we didn't, we didn't recognize it. We didn't give it a chance. So this is a really important lesson for your last class of this semester is give things a chance. Look into them before you have that knee-jerk reaction of saying, oh, that's ridiculous, and then ignoring it. So anyway, Professor Wells was the one person who said, why hasn't anybody written about this? This is very interesting. Many of the other people said, oh, that's ridiculous. I've never heard of such a thing. So I have to say I really admired him for that. And for me, these happened to be very, very close, extremely close. But in my mind, even before I knew what a phoneme was, just because I know how to spell, and I was influenced by spelling too, but in fact, I actually speak that way. This to me is an allophone of ah, like in father. It's not ah at all. It sounds a lot like ah, but phonemically, we spell it with ah, and in my brain, that is ah. When it comes before L, it's a conditioned, this is a conditioned phonological change. When it comes before L, it gets lip rounding. No, I'm just telling you what it works, how it works in my brain. This doesn't mean you're, you, know, you need to uh, demand that it appear in your textbooks. This is just me, and I know other people have it where I come from, my part of the Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Not everybody there has it, but some people my age do. So in my head, it is ah, and then in front of L, it becomes slightly rounded. But this one, the original phoneme is not ah, the original phoneme is ah. So for me, in my head, these are two different phonemes. This one is a bit rounded before L. This one is more rounded before L. This is how it works in my personal phonology. This is just to share with you a tiny, tiny variation in my very bland American English. Well, this is a pindan or wueda, Midwestern American English. But this is something I realized. I did a small survey over Facebook. A few people have it. Most people said, no, they're all the same for me. So listen to the words, ball, ball. Really close. Watch my mouth and you can see it. Ball, 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 ball. They're so close. But can you hear a bit of a difference? There's more rounding with ball, A-W. And it also applies to A-U words. For me, they're the same category. In spelling, A-W and A-U, they are all the ah phoneme. So where I come from is St. Paul. But then there's a word Paul, which means something like shadow. So this is a minimal pair for me. Paul, 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 Paul. And there are a number of other words that are not so common. All, all, siga, zhuizi. It's a kind of a tool. All, 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 all. I don't always make them really clear. If I'm speaking fast, there's no difference. But I just wanted to share that with you. I have a different set of a different, uh, a slightly different phonology from what you learn in your textbook for American English. Okay, just for your reference, wanted to share that with you. All right. Next, we are going to go to finishing up our exercises for Chapter Four. <laughs> John Morteloba. Everybody remember what that is? John Morteloba. I see that word now often. I have a few Georgian friends on Facebook, and they've been posting that. I wish you happiness and good health in the new year. So I've been seeing John Martelloba lately. <laughs> okay. um, we pretty much finished, although not really thoroughly. We very quickly got through the written exercises. Let's just go through the performance exercises quickly, and then we're going to um, do the IPA. OK, quickly, learn to produce only the first part of the vowel a, as in hey. Try saying this sound in place of your normal diphthong in words such as they came late. Now, this will not be difficult for Taiwanese because you do it anyway. You have trouble with the A diphthong. You do this without trying. So it's probably more important for you to learn the full diphthong than to cut it in half. Let's try the normal one first. They came late. Some of you still don't do came right. You're saying can. Let's do a by itself. A. a. Good. Just think of fei chang the fei, the 里面的那个 a, and put an e after it, and then it will be long enough. Fei, 
So, a. a. Yeah, that's good. So they came late. They came late. All right. Some of you are still saying can. came. Came. Yeah. And some of you are saying lay. It's not lay. It's l. Watch that th voiced interdental l. They came late. Make the A longer. Don't make the M too soon. Don't, don't say the M too soon. Came. 那个 M 比较要延后一点. They. Use the echo. They came late. Go. They came this time it sounded good. All right. Now, try saying it without the second half of the diphthong, which should be easy because you do that anyway. So they, if it's just a, let's take off the e part. Then it becomes a, a. All right, try saying it with just a instead of a e. Go. All right, that's not quite Taiwan English. That's a different kind of English. You say them, lay uh, kem let, right? Lay kem lat. That's what I usually hear. So they came late instead of late, late. You won't see my mouth move for the e part. They came late. Try? It still sounds better than Taiwan English, actually. Let's do the same thing with the mid-high back vowel. O, let's just say the O part. That's another thing you do instead of saying no. Many of you say no. So no, the first part is O, O, OK? This is kind of silly, but it's got O's. And this is not so good because of the L. Let's just try road by itself before I think of a better word. OK, Ro road is the original, road. road. All right, let's cut off the second part of the diphthong, road. road. OK. I don't want to think of another one. That's enough. You get how it works. I don't want to train you to. Shorten your diphthongs. <laughs> All right. Um, B is incorporate A and O in nonsense words for production and perception. They might now also include the voiceless sounds. What? You can only hear it well if you put a vowel after it. Let's put I after it. Ma. Na. Uh-huh. And na. And notice they put the little circle on top of the NG because the curly Q down there takes up space, so they put the circle on top for angma. Angma, shang mian. And then, um, all right, hua. Hua, you have no problem because you learned that in school. Hua. And what? Ya. Uh huh, okay. So let's try saying those words. Let's just do them together, get through this. We'll be done in a short time, I hope. OK? The first one? Ma na. Watch the stress. Next one? Ne me. Next one? Mm hmm. Everyone? Nga le. Go. Next one? OK, don't say mo. It's just mo, mo. All right, do it again. Mo i. And the next one? Le, le. Good. OK. Then more difficult ones. What's the next one? Everyone. He, ma, ne. Next one. OK. Ngam, mm, bel. Ngam, mm, bel. OK. Next one. There's a syllabic N, so just take it as a separate, separate syllable. Try it again. Spo, e, n, oi. OK, next one. Try it again. That's ho, ho. That's a, a voiceless W, so ho, ho, sho. Res, v. Once more. Okay, next one. Mm 
Okay. Okay. If they don't go easily with the next syllable, you can stick them with the first syllable because it doesn't give a syllable division. Division. So you can say, "tlep hri." Then what? Ji, guj. Try it again. Tlep hri, ji, guj. All right. And then um, I think I told you you don't have you didn't have to do the vowel chart. And let's try the last ones. They're going to be tough. I'll stumble on these. In part E. First one. Right, so watch the stress. So, fe again. Fe mi, fe vi, me, me. Uh huh, the next one. Se ra ho sa ho fi pos. That sounds Greek, doesn't it? Next one. Mo pre de. Le te ki. Okay, and? Na ko to ta po to tak. Make a K, alright. And? La kim ni ti no ne e. Okay, we've finished. We're done. We're done with chapter four. Alright, the one thing we really have left to do is Mandarin and IPA. And I guess we didn't organize well enough to have you put the Transcriptions on the board before class. And this is the last class, so we can't wait for break. So everybody who had a transcription assignment, please go put it up now. As orderly and quickly as you can, please. Always keep in mind that these are just one set of choices, and they're a bit flexible, and a lot of people will do things differently. And for the rest of you who have nothing to do, you can find the mistakes in the model transcription I gave you. There were a number of mistakes and inconsistencies. See if you can find them and we'll fix it. Here we go. Get out a red pen. We're going to mark the answers now. Now again, I'm going to repeat. This is not set in cement. This is not de. Many people will use a different system. I have adapted the system that I like to use for Taiwan Mandarin. So it's sort of a mixture of Beijing and Taiwan, mixture of phonemic and phonetic. And you think, well, it's neither fish nor fowl, or flesh nor fowl is what they say. It's something in between, but I've often found that often an answer in the middle is a practical one to work with for many purposes. So that's why it's a phonemic, phonemic system with some compromises to allophones. They are choices I made. Other people make different choices, so don't say, Ms. Chung, this system does this. Did we learn it wrong, or are they doing it wrong? No, other people do it in different ways. But you should be able to judge whether it is a consistent system and whether it is a representative system of what it's trying to transcribe. So you should be able to judge whether it's a pretty good usable system or whether it has inconsistencies and needs to be fixed up. Okay? This is not by any means any kind of a de Belgian. We're going to um, okay, start with ping. So far, so good. And Remember that for aspirated, b, p, and the t, nigga, p, t, and k, we're going to have to use the raised h. So ping, and we're going to use this regular i instead of the short i that we use for English. For English, we write ing like this. Shouldn't be sticking out there. Okay, we write ing like this, but we're going to use the regular dotted i for Chinese. Okay? So ping, dong, xian. Except for, where does the curly Q go? Does it go, oh, it looks like it's, it looks like, it looks like it's on the top. It goes lower than that. The, the symbol's the right idea, but we write it like that. And here, the original phoneme is some kind of ah, but because of what, it becomes eh. Because of this high front vowel e, it, affects this vowel, so it's not xian. Some dialects do that in China, but we don't in Taiwan. Xian, xian, so that's why we picked that. And this one is one, and we use this, yu mao zi de a, before n. Before ng ang ma, we use mei yu mao zi de a, ah. An, we use this, ang, we use the other ah. So you're gonna run into this question uh, probably in other places. One. Luan. Try not to make it stick out. I do stuff like this, but you have to fix it up afterwards. 
and I don't use the short u, I just use this. This is fine. Xiang, again, bring the xi down lower because it looks like the curly q is on top instead of on the bottom. Xiang, good. Try not to make it stick out. And then we have ci ji, right? So, ci is good, zi ci with aspiration. A barred E is U, second tone, or si, probably reasonable for Taiwan. Some people say that in Taiwan Mandarin, maybe four levels are enough, but we'll stick with five. Anyway, si sheng hao xiang yi man gao de di fang kai si xia jiang. Mi nan yu kenen zi xiao si ge level. Si, what's wrong here? Should it be barred? No, here it's not. Si, zi, si, zi, bu dui, huh? And T, is it going to be with TS? No, it's going to be with TC. Right, TC. You can also write it this way with C. Because C is a palatal. So this word is ya, ya, ya. This is in the same place of articulation as she. So actually, this is probably a little better. But like I said, this is a system full of compromises. And this is more common, especially in materials from mainland China. You will see this. So we're going to stick with T. Just keep in mind, we could write a C there. Probably be a, a little more consistent and precise. All right, Si Ji is now OK. And next we have, yeah. Then it would be Ping Tong. Ping Tong. Right? Taiwan you have this place, Okay? It's possible. Um, there's a place called Tong Xiao. So there's plenty of Tong in Taiwan, but maybe not there. All right, Si Ji. And then Huan, what do we need to watch out for here? We got it right here, but we need to do it here, too. What is it? Your mouth. Your mouth, yeah, this mouth. Remember for An, we're going to use your mouth. For Ang, we'll use your mouth, okay? So, Huan or Si, Bao. And, yeah, we're going to use this for Ao, because for me it's more back. So, we're going to use this and not Yong Mao Zi for Ao. And then, Zhi, we're missing something. The vowel. The vowel, and we're missing it because of Zhu Yin Fu Hao again. Because in Zhu Yin Fu Hao, it's only one symbol. So, let's make some room for it and put in a retroflex vowel here and put the tone mark back. Zhi. Now, it is not zhi like in Beijing, but we stick with the symbols to keep the system sort of in order. When I do my own transcriptions for papers, sometimes I use this instead. Because I think in Taiwan, it's almost like an English zhi with no rounding. That's what I Yeah. I think the vowel yeah, you can put it higher. The point is it needs a little hook there. And the hook needs to come down to the other part. Okay. Okay? Oh. Yeah. Right, what? Oh, no. We use ao here. We use you. Yeah. Pao. Pao. No. It's pao. Yeah. We're, sorry? Bao, 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 wan bao. I think it's just a choice we made. Bao. I think it's closer to u, and it's mostly it's mostly a convention that a lot of people do it now. Bao, bao. I I just don't think o is is accurate. 我觉得u还比较有代表性. Yeah, wan bao zhi. Right. What is this here? Guang. Guang, do we have that sound in Chinese? No. Okay, so let's get rid of the u. It's the beginning of guang. If it were guang, it would be fine. Zhi gong. Okay. And then? Is this okay? 
right? Just make the, you should, it's better to make the tea drenched as well. It's the same problem as with this. You can use a regular tea, but here I've chosen to use the drenched tea. So we'll use the Retroflex tea here, post alveolar. It's probably better to call it post alveolar. Um, okay, Chen, Wen, it's okay. Zhong, what does this look like? Zhuang, Zhuang. We're gonna we're gonna make this retroflex post alveolar. Not quite that long. Okay. Well, we have to make it a little longer, otherwise we can't tell the difference. Zhi, what should it be? Same as Gong, right? It rhymes with Gong. Zhong. Where are we going to have problems? And that is, how do we write this in IPA, in, or in Taiwan Mandarin? How do you say it? Feng. But how do they say it in Beijing? Feng. Feng. Yeah. So we're going to go with ong for this group of rhymes, too. That will be different from Beijing Mandarin. OK, zhong. And then, go ahead. What's next? Jia. Jia. Oh, yeah, Li. I was looking for Yang. I guess there's a Li, isn't there? Just a sec. Yeah. Right, okay, Li is fine. And in mainland China, what, or northern China in Pe Beijing, what would we expect? Would we expect a third tone there? Yeah. But we don't have it. We've got a third tone. And then Yang is okay. Le. All right, what are we going to do with le? We still need a tone there. Can you say it? Where would you put the tone? It's short, so we're going to make a short line. Where should we put it on the line? One, two, three, four, five. It's got five levels. Put it up here? Oh, sorry, second, down here. This is one, two, three, four, five. You want four, the place where I put it in the first place when I mail John Guolai to Shaho. Okay? Yeah, look, you like four? Oh, sorry, on the wrong side. I put it on the L. Didn't mean to do that. How? There we go. Well, it happens to look the same on the, both sides. How's Dui Chen to? Okay, so is that okay? Four? Yang, look. Are you happy with that? Yes or no? Okay. Zhi? Yes, John. Yes. I think the vowel, okay, we use shua. Yeah. Use this, actually I mostly don't use it. We're going with schwa because usually we don't make the uh sound like du uh. If we say uh, then we'd use that vowel. Mostly we're just going to use schwa for that vowel. Because in Taiwan we don't have so much, it's not so back, it's more central. Okay, I'm not making it very clear on the board, but they should be longer for the full tones, about half the length, a teeny tiny little xian for the qingsheng. Okay? And then zhi, you still need a little hook up here. Okay, zhi. How about this? Huang is okay? This one goes all the way up to five, but for Taiwan Mandarin, probably it only goes up to four, two, four. Or three, four. I missed yeah. I missed one word. You missed. Uh huh. E. All right. So, how should we write that? I. Just the letter I and fourth tone. Fourth tone. Actually, may you each is a tone, right? Yang le zhi. All right. Yang le yi zhi. Huang. We're gonna go for shua here. Huang se, unless you say Huang se, Huang se, but that sounds like, doi, how do you say Qing or something like that? I don't know. You had that, you may have this feeling, right? Yeah. Because Huang se, it's much more pingdan. Okay, so Huang se, what? Duan. Duan. How about the A? Jack of Mouth. Duan. Okay, otherwise it's Duan. Duan Mao. 
I had a I had a an American classmate who did that. He doesn't know that this is a telephone. So he would say "on train" instead of "on train." And when I said "on train," he said, "Wow, you make the accent so strong. On, it sounds like ah." Um, they don't usually teach us about elephones. You have to pick it up yourself. And the same is true of English. When they teach you English here, they usually don't tell you about elephones. So, Duan, Mao, okay. Except for for Ao, did we did we choose this one? We chose. We chose a more back one. Okay, Mao. We're going to use the more background, the back one. Okay, because it's not quite like the English Ao, which is more central. I think it's more back. Go is okay. Uh huh. Bu is okay. Ding. Five five is okay or four four if it's lower. Taiwan is 真的比较低 In Beijing, it's like ma 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 ma. So when you hear Beijing Mandarin, 听起来蛮尖锐 Is that right? Yes. 对 That's what people tell me, and to my own ears too. Especially the way they say it. 一部分是他 delivered 的方式那一部分是他的他的第一声真的是比较高 ，and this was probably influenced by 闽南语，因为闽南语的第一声就是一个四四，它比较低。All right, so 布丁 is okay, and then 面，哈面 ，I think of 老鼠，面 ，but that's 面 ，um should be. Just e i with a dot may, okay? Tian, we're gonna let it stick out. Move it up a little. Tian, watch out! Don't make lines on your eyes. Make sure they're dots. Otherwise, it looks like a tone mark. Tian, what else? Um, I'm losing my place here. I just need to find it for a minute. Okay, zai, is that okay? Except for. How we? What do we choose for I? We are using this one. Because E's relationship, that I should be in the middle. So, in I chose to use this one. And then, Zhu. 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 Has to have a really clear retroflex hook at the end. Down, it's I jog it down to go go, because if you just make a curl, it's not that clear. So Z, it has a it has a hook on the on the bottom. Okay, so that makes it jianshe. Ren, all right. Is this correct? Okay. P. All right. This one 不能突出来，因为中文的三声。So、it starts out low and it goes even lower. It should be what? Two E. It is two E. Not to be cut off. It is two E. Okay. Good. Pig. Ho is okay. Ho mian. And that's another one in Beijing. It probably would be. 后面 ，Yeah， 后面 ，Probably will be 轻声 in Beijing. Uh huh. This is really hard to follow on both sides. Okay. Uh huh. What What's missing? Yeah, we need more room here. Not g. Gun. All right. What else? Jin is okay. Don't make this quite so high. The T also doesn't need to be so big. It looks like a, juan she, okay. 跟进，跟 this time it's correct. 出 and this should also be a little lower. It's as low as a regular S, and then just add the hook. Well, it's a little too small. There we go. Okay, 出 and don't make this. Yeah, this can be also lengthened for, juan she, and then, 或 Oh, this is the chu here. So let's finish. Chu. Actually, this this aspiration does it really belong after the shi or after the te? In theory, it should be after the te because that's where the release of the stop comes. 
The convention is to put it after the whole Africa. Everybody paying attention? This is kind of important. 一般的用法就是整个色那个色差音后面加那个 raised little h, but actually it comes here. 有一些系统会把它写在这里 It's a little more accurate. 出或 is okay. 许 Okay, usually make the she smaller, but it's okay. What else? She is okay. And then? Tong. Okay. Except for we could make it a little, make it uh, three, four, or two, four instead of five. Xiao. Is that okay? And? Er. Is that okay? Sorry, Jerome? It should be the backwards, upside down. Should be an upside down R. This is a different one that they're using here. So you take an upside down R like in American English, and, with a and then you retroflex it. Because they're very similar, except in American English we have rounding. Er, er, dirt, her. You don't have rounding in Chinese, but you have a post alveolar. R, R, doi. So it's still a very similar kind of R without the rounding, which we don't mark anyway, plus retroflex. And then, next, what is it? Ru. We're going to stop there because the bell rang. Let's take a short break. Okay? It looks like most of you are back, actually. Why don't we continue? It's our last class. All right, during the break, there was a question. And that was about on page 99 in your textbooks. Let's do this before we go back to our transcription, which is almost done. Go, go to page 99 in your textbooks. And this was something that I got confused when I was presenting because, in fact, this whole idea of tense and lax vowels and having pairs that we can match up with each other is not something everybody agrees on. And I was, I was just saying that when Latifoged doesn't like something, he usually, either he will make it clear in the textbook that he doesn't like it very much, you know, like when we were talking about coronals. Does everybody remember coronals, nigga Shaddai? What did we say about coronals? Is it a very useful term in phonetics? No, it's used mainly in phonology. And it's useful in phonology, but it's very long tone. So we don't find it so useful in phonetics. So he was saying, this is not useful. He will usually say right out when he doesn't like something. Or, and I'm being a little presumptuous in saying so, sometimes the things do not get presented very well. That's why I left Toby out. Toby is a useful system, but I find the way it's presented in this textbook confusing. That's why I just left it out. If you want to use Toby, go ahead and there's stuff on the internet, you can learn it yourself. And for this, I, I, not, I don't remember for sure, but I believe that this table was not, did not exist in this form in the old editions. And when I was teaching it, I remember being confused and thinking, how am I going to get through this? And I tried to fix it up as well as I could for the video. But in fact, there's a problem, a lot of problems with this table. And it's with the ten, so-called tense and lax vowels. Okay, Latifoga does not, as far as I know, he did not like the terms tense and lax vowels. However, we have defined short and long vowels Let's just forget about tense and lax. We have de defined short and, lo and long vowels very clearly phonologically. Is that right? It's a phonological definition, and it's very consistent, and there's no problem with it that I know of. What is the definition of a long vowel in English? A long vowel is a vowel that can occur in both open and closed syllables. A short vowel is a vowel that can only occur in closed syllables. And basically, as far as I can tell, Tense, jiu deng yu long. Lax, jiu deng yu short. That's the best thing we can do with them. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. Because if you're talking about articulation, you cannot prove that one is really more or less tense than the other. So is it really is? You can make is quite tense. Your tongue can be quite tense. Or he doesn't want to go. He can also be very lax. So personally, I think tense and lax if you want to use them simply as labels for phonology, you have to define them clearly that they mean short and long. Then it's okay. We have no problem. But if you really want to start measuring physiological tenseness and laxness, it's not going to work. So frankly, I will not test you on that. Ignore tense and lax. Just ignore it. 
but we will definitely refer to short and long vowels as defined by their phonological definition. Did that clarify everything? Go chinchuma. And here it says in this table, oi is under lax vowels. Now that makes no sense because it is a, oi is a diphthong, and all diphthongs are long. All diphthongs are long. Is there an exception? Can you think of a diphthong that can only occur in a closed syllable? Jerome's thinking. Anybody else? No. All diphthongs are long. I believe this was a misprint. I don't think it was that they don't understand it. I think it was a misprint. This table is confusing. There are many ways of linking up or of matching up the vowels into pairs. These are often put together as long and short. Ah is long, at is short. They often go together as a pair. You can also say that a goes together with a because of spelling for historical reasons. So for example, with the final silent e, we have pate. Without it, we have pat. So these form a pair. And this is what they call long and short when they're teaching kids how to read. You should just know that because it exists. And if you talk to Americans about long and short vowels, this is what they understand. And you can easily remember them by spelling. So this is a short it and bit. The long, the long I would be what? Bite. And that is I. So we've got I here matched with it. And you can find it in the spelling. Let's try another one. Let's try oo. This actually they use u. So for example, C-U-T-E and C-U-T. We've got cute. So we'll get rid of the K here. U and a. Uh. So U and a uh will be paired together. You can see it in the spelling. We have a little bit of a problem with E because E doesn't form, doesn't form a diphthong. Uh, we have, let's see if we have a good pair. I'll just pick one out of the, out of the air. Seen. And then we have, for example, set. Okay, oh, we can do that. Sorry. That's better. Okay, seat and set, seat and set. So this is E and this is E. Those will often go together. This is not a diphthong, though. That's the only one that's not a diphthong. And then we also have O and A. So for example, um, not such a good example, but I can't think of a better one. And it also is OK, actually. Soap is O. Or we could have something with O something E. Oh, there we go. Here's a better one. Note, not. That's a better one. O, and this sounds like A. Ah. So here O gets A ah, matched with A, ah, which is written as O. This A ah gets matched with A, ah, but this A ah is written as as A. Ah. Well, it does not necessarily, but yeah. Pa, and then this becomes A ah if it's pat. So this one doesn't work so well for American because we don't have that many A's ah written as A. Most of our A ah sounds are written as O. And in our minds, that's a short O. And a short O is like note and not, which matches O and A. Ah. Now that may have sounded very confusing, but if you look at the spelling, it's very, very clear. Kima, did you follow or not? N-O-T, ah, not. N-O-T-E, that, that's the so-called long vowel. That becomes O. All right? Um, S-E-T, set. And then we've got seat here. We can put those together in a pair. Cut, cute. You can see it in the spelling. Bit, bite. Pat, pate. A goes with A. That's the little kid's version of long and short vowels. It doesn't help us in what we're doing. But you need to know this, because if you talk to someone who hasn't studied phonetics in the States, this is what they understand by long and short. Is it clear or not? Annie's got it. How about the rest of you? Is it clear? Whenever you're not sure, just go to the spellings. And very often, you can add a silent E, and then you will get the pair that you're looking for. Doesn't work for all words, but this is one way to do it. So there's a mixture of this in that table, it seems. The pairs are not very tidy, so never mind about the pairs. 
We're simply going to use the phonological definition of long and short vowels, and that's the end of the story. And all diphthongs are long. That part is really clear, right? That's really all you need. That's all I'll test you on. This other stuff is just cultural background. Let's finish, unless we have any questions. So this oi does not belong there at all. It should be under the tense vowels. And these pairs are not so tidy. U goes with u, no problem, but where did o go? O does not have a good match. In American, it goes with a. A goes with a in American. And e actually goes with a. So confusing. Never mind. Buguanta. OK? Mm. Was there anything else that we needed to bring up that was confusing or mistaken or anything like that? Sometimes, Ms. Joe, I yeah. don't, I don't, sometimes I don't distinguish the neutral tones. Where, where do I need to mark the tone? Uh, do, do you know what I mean? In Chinese. Well, first of all, in Taiwan Mandarin, we, we use very, very, very few, what? Neutral tones. Jihu meo. Taiwan the nigga hua yu ji hu se mei qing sheng. Mostly qing sheng are restricted to what? Function words. Like de, men, zhe, kan zhe shu, shi dong xi, right? Or chi zhe dong xi kan shu, whatever. So mostly the qing sheng in Taiwan Mandarin is restricted to function words. That should go in your notes. That's an important idea. That's about the only place you find Qingsheng and Mandarin in Taiwan. The other ones will be very foreign sounding. They sound very Beijing. Not very, they don't sound very natural for Taiwan. Did that answer your question, Stanley, or not? Uh, because we, we know that uh, neutral tongue, we can place all, 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 uh, all, the, all the tones can become neutral. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I wonder that which, which tones I can mark. Oh. Well, it seems to me that in Taiwan Mandarin, you don't mark any of them except the function words. If you're, if you're talking about Beijing Mandarin, that's another story. And I'm not really qualified to answer that. But it's usually a high, like global and things like that. So yeah. for the example, Lopo, we, we should mark the Tones in the second, in the second, second part of second syllable. Second syllable. Second syllable. Yeah. Syllable. And uh, in the shi we always okay. mark in the fourth syllable. No, no, no. Zi is actually an example of a neutral, a neutral function word. Zi is like a ci wei. It's a it's a suffix for nouns, like yi zi, zhuo zi, shi zi. That is a neutral tone. If you pronounce it in the third tone, then it becomes, yeah, and then it's like kong zi, like zi nu. Then it takes on lexical meaning. It means son or scholar, teacher, whatever. OK? okay. That answer the question? Uh, so zi is just one of, those, one of those function words. It happens to be a suffix in this case. We do have a, a, a neutral tone there, one of the rare neutral tones that we have in Taiwan. Kaima. Yeah, OK, thank you. Anybody else? Let's go back to our work here. Um, we stopped in a very strange place. OK, so it was er, er, ru. Then we have to go on to seven. There we go. OK, mu. I'll make your fourth tone a little larger, because I think we really do start at five. Five levels is probably the best. We only use it in the fourth tone, though. Mu. And how about the vowel here? We don't need two curls, just one curl to the right. Maozi. And then, yo bian, eating out good zhi xian. Ta bu si ge san sheng. I mean, it's not. Bu si zi ge fu hao. Wo men yong de bu si san sheng de fu hao. We put a line here, and we have two one. So, it's er, ru, mu, ran. Okay, ma? And then, the, I would put it up at four maybe. That's what Jerome suggested. The, and then, guan should be. Guan. 
关 because it's n. Therefore, we use a, 安全的安帽子 And then、um, I don't understand this 符号 here.、Um, I have to go back and find the place. Okay, 关系 All right. And guan, we don't want a line under here. It's not a tap symbol. So guan, like this, a little longer. Let's make it a little longer there. Guan, and then for what is your tone for this word? It can be both in Taiwan. In Beijing, it's what? Yeah, in Beijing, that's a qingsheng guanxi, mei guanxi, mei guanxi. But in Taiwan, it's either. It's either a first tone or, or a fourth tone. But to me personally, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, if you use a fourth tone here, it sounds more emphatic to me. I don't know if that's true. 没关系，没关系，没关系，没关系 doesn't sound natural to me. 他跟他的关系是怎样？ I use the fourth tone when typing. Ah. Yeah, originally, but actually, it should be. In this case, it should be a qingsheng. I do hear the fourth tone sometimes. People do say the fourth tone sometimes, but the default in Taiwan is first tone. Mei guan xi. And it sounds funny, I'm sure, to a Beijing speaker that you make it so clear, such a clear tone. You guys say mei guan xi, mei guan xi. It really sounds like it doesn't matter. 连那个声调都无所谓了 right? 连声调都没关系 All right, but when we say 没关系，你好像有点坚持在那里。没关系 ，you have a full tone. <laughs> That's just my subjective feeling, but it is definitely a first tone. Do you agree, most of you? We're not. 我们现在不是做文书输入 ，all right? We're just saying what we hear. And 布丁 ，watch that line on the right. It needs to be straight. Not that I'm really good at straight lines. Okay, 布丁 ，are we okay here? Yeah. Then we go to eight.、Um, missing? Okay. It's uh huh. Okay. Just a minute. Let me find the place here again. The Guan Xi Bu Ding Hui. Yeah. What should we write? H U E I tone. There we go. All right. Bu Ding Hui. Zhen Yang. And this is the same as English. What would we use here in English? Because we're talking about what, in terms of in terms of shi tai. What are we talking about? You use hui very much like we use what in English. No, not will. That's the problem. That's what Taiwanese do. That's Taiwan English. Would, a past tense. Because he talks about past tense things. 他会，他每天会这样做。He's talking about what happened up to the past when he was reporting this. 他每天会这样做。Of course, it can mean into the future in Chinese. 会 is much, much looser than would in English. But in terms of this story, at least in my interpretation, 会 this is what he does every day up to the point of the report. So it's 之前，他每天会这样做。Every day he would bring a bag of garbage, whatever, in his mouth. Okay, so. There's the missing word, and then after that, what's the problem here? Got the right phoneme, but yeah, I think it's worth putting in the allophone here. It's the right phoneme, but the ag and s is I cha tai duo, which is why I made this compromise. Jie, and then shi. Okay, try not to go through the line. Shi, that's good enough, and then. 啊，平平罐罐 ，right？ 平，平，罐。Remember， 安全的安要放帽子，安跟昂，哎啊哎啊，不一样的一个 a 的 phone， 呃 ，the elephone， 罐，罐 ，and then， 在，林，林 or 林。This is a Taiwan Mandarin problem, right? Because many people are not fluent. Now it's true we could put that in our transcription, but again, it's a compromise. 
I make some kinds of allowances for things I think are okay. Other things I think are still not okay. And one is an ng yao fen. Otherwise, it's really going to get confusing. So, lin ju de lin is not ling ju, lin ju, ling ju. A lot of you don't distinguish. Yeah? The vowel is inside. The a should be with the a with the a. We're using a mouse here. Yeah, I thought it and didn't follow through. Thank you. Very good. So, zai, lin. And then, we're going on here. Go on. Li. Jie, what kind of vowel should we use here? This would be jie, jie, a. Is it jie or jie? Dierga, right? Therefore, we should use epsilon. Okay. Lin li jie. All right. Do you guys use the first tone for this word? The dictionary tone is, is one. What do you use? Ni me yong di ji sheng. Di yi sheng ma? Or di san sheng? I use the first tone. Okay, Jerome has the first tone. How, the, how about the rest of you? Anybody who does not use the first tone for this word, what do you use? Second? Third? Many people use the third tone. 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 三声我觉得在台湾很普遍 But if anybody checks the dictionary, it should be the first tone. I prefer the first one here. So 街坊, and then? Yeah. We use a J here. Why? Somebody asked during the break. Why? We use J instead of I here because it's a diphthong, and it's the first sound in the syllable. It's a rising diphthong, just like you in English. So if it's the first sound of the syllable, we use J instead of I. Now, I've made an exception because E, I've left out the J of E. And that's maybe not consistent, but we really don't say Yi in Taiwan, and that's why. In, I think in, if you're using IPA to write Beijing Mandarin, you will probably write Yi for E or sign the E, which is a J. But I think it's really not appropriate for Taiwan, for I. Just I zi qian. Okay, so just for e or sign the e, I just use e. And then yen. Zhong. Okay. Bu. Zemiang. Uh huh. Bu zhe. All right, we're going to use what? We're going to use a shua here. 不折, 不折, 不, 扣, and then 是, 个, where does the tone for 个 go? This one is a 轻声, right? Yes? Yeah. Sorry? Ah, ah, thank you. Ah, wrong, this is wrong. Thank you very much. This is what we should have here. Okay. Zhong. S is not beautiful, but that's what it is. It's a retroflex. Zhi. Try it again. Not much better, but here. Okay, so, Zhong. Bu. Zhe. Bu. Kou. Shi. Ge. All right, what's the tone on ge? It's a neutral tone, right? Especially when we don't say yi ge, right? You can say yi ge dong xi, and you can make it very full. But in this case, woman jiao mei shu zi, right? Okay, bu zhe bu kou shi yi ge hui. If we put e there, then maybe it wouldn't be so neutral. But here it's very short. Shi ge, okay? Hui, is something missing? This is a triff thong. It's a little confusing because in pinyin, hanyu pinyin, it's hui, like this. They made the triphthong into just two letters for the hanyu pinyin spelling. But here, we need an I. Okay, hui, zuo, okay? Huan, we need a little longer, but it's right. 
环，环保，回。What's missing? Same thing. Okay, 回，收。Don't make it stick out too much. 收，的 ，make it very short. Go. We're done. Okay. Now, did I miss anything? Jerome's been catching most of the things I miss. It's really, really easy to miss things, and it's hard also to find my place on my um, on my copy here. Anybody? Yeah. It's it's without. Oh, actually, for this one, yeah, I do this. This is what I use. Zuo, zuo. Let me see what I have here. Yeah, 对，就是这样子。Zuo, it because it's not zuo, it's zuo, zuo. So I do use the kaiko o there. Any other questions? Just like in Hong, same one. Anything else? Kaima. All right, so go over it carefully. We have some time left. Let's do another part. Let's do another. Let's do another sentence. Just one sentence, okay? In the next paragraph, do it up to 踏板坐定那个地方 Do it now in class. Everybody, quickly. What's What's the problem? Huh? 没有印中文出来 All right, I'll put it up. Okay. Is it okay? 布丁约在七八个月大时，这个地方可以吗 ？Please tell me yes or no. Yes. Thank you. Wow. You really don't have the habit of giving teachers feedback, is that right? The answer is no. No, we don't have the habit. Because I find that in all my classes, I'll ask them a question and they'll just stare at me. You need to give feedback. You really need to give feedback. When you're a teacher in the future, you will want it yourself. So try to get in the habit. I know you're not used to it, but you can make yourself used to it pretty quickly, I think. Okay. Whoever is finished, who has not already put something on the board, 还没有写过的人 please go up and start. Someone who has finished the sentence. Try to copy it down on your paper, and that way we can refer to it when we're correcting on the board. We have only a little time. This is going to finish the rest of the hour. Okay, let's see what we can do here. We need to work kind of fast. Everybody, watch now. Tell me when you see something wrong. 布丁，约。All right. What do we want for the u sound? We want a y. Now, there's two different things we can do. We can either add. We can add the initial glide, or we cannot. This one is. How about the vowel? It's a dao san. It's an epsilon. Yue. If we want to add a glide, this is something we didn't really pay much attention to. You can use an upside down H. That's u, the glide. For example, e the glide is ye, u the glide is wu, and u the glide is this upside down H. Everybody got that? So e y u w and u y y. So you can if it's got a clear glide on it, y 可以。你不加在台湾应该也可以。y that one is、uh, kind of up for grabs. Um, 在七八个 we have to do the same thing again. y and then this is optional. Yeah, it's probably fine without it. Uh huh. Thank you. Good. Da. We use which ah? No hat. Da. All right. Shi is okay. And then, lai is okay. Dao. Chen. Everything okay? Jia okay. That's better. Jia, it's not jia. Meo na machi meo. You're right. There's no n there. What else? Yo. 
We don't need the eye there because the glide has taken care of it. Yo. Yu. If you have a glide, then it's yu. Optional. Mm hmm. Cool eye. Here. Cool eye. Mm hmm. Zuo. Mo. To. Mo. To. Mo. To. Should it be? How do we write it? How about this one? Same thing. And then make this flat, because it's not tuo, mo tuo, che. Is that okay? Mei, okay? Tsu. Is that okay? All right. Zhi. Zuo bian, thank you. Okay? Zhi, are we okay? Yao. Ting. Dao. Zhu. Zen a little longer, maybe? Zen. Fa. Dong. Mo. Tuo. It's better with this to be longer. Zhen she. Not too long. Okay. Mo tuo. Che. De. Sheng. Yin. All right. Uh, yeah? The vowel in Sheng, Shalina is. Can we transcribe it as the back for the. This? No, this. Or this? Yes. If you have. I would, I would say stick with, because even you turn your mouth to this sound, that sound. Up to now, we've only been using this. We're not using this. Unless you say, sheng, you're really exaggerated. I use it for some sounds like, um, ke, maybe ke, e, you know, e, the yin, the way, use. Otherwise, in Taiwan, it's quite neutralized. I think the shua is fine. Okay? If you're going to use this, we'll probably have to use it elsewhere to be consistent. Yeah? If you pronounce it that way, you can choose, but you're going to have to choose. In order to be consistent, I've stuck with all schwas. But if you say ch instead of ch, which one do you like better? Ch or ch? First or second? In that case, I'd pick the schwa. Go ahead, Carol. OK, thank you. You're right. We all missed it. Nobody said it till you did. And like I said, this happens all the time at the board. If I'm looking down at papers, it's a little easier. I might still miss it then, though. Okay, motorche. If you if you really say u, then you have to consider: Do you want to use that? And how are you going to distinguish between when you use this and the schwa? You're going to have to decide that. Niao jue ding. Yao you you need to be have it principled. Ta you go yuan zhe. Ni bu Okay, what? Yeah, you're missing that too, right? We're getting a little sloppy here, aren't we? Mo, okay. Mo, tuo, che, che, de, sheng, yin. All right. Here, yin is one way for yi. We've been mostly doing it this way. This is the way you'll find it in most of the work on Chinese from China. All right. Bu, yong. Now, remember how we write yong in, in Hanyu Pinyin? We use an o sound. The reason they use yu is because in Beijing they say bu yong. Bu yong. How does that sound to you, to your ears? Buyong. How do you like that? Doesn't sound natural for Taiwan, which is why we use the ong. J, open o, ng. That's what we use here. We don't use yung at all. It makes sense for northern Mandarin, not for Taiwan Mandarin so much. Buyong. OK? Let's finish up. We're almost done. Yeah. Zhao, excuse me, can I get rid of this now? It's kind of in the way. Zhao, hu, jiu, uh huh, hui. Do we want zhu? We need to make that very short. It's only 
to one. Yeah. 主动，跳，上。All right. Again, Beijing is probably a neutral tone. 跳上 ，and only five characters left. Okay, this looks a little bit like an epsilon, so. And also, I 一定是个点 Don't make it a line. 角 Right. For our, we're choosing. 角塔板 Yeah. Uh huh. 坐 Make it should start all the way up. 坐 I think it looks okay. I think we're done. What do you think? Anybody find anything I missed? Now, this is not perfect. Like I said, these are personal choices. This is what good and stranda because I think it works for Taiwan Mandarin. There's some things where we use different syllables for the same phoneme to show some of the obvious allophones. We didn't show all of the allophones. We just showed some of the more obvious ones. But I think as a base, to 把这个作为一个台湾的华语的一个基础，这个还可以用。It's usable. That's all I can say for it. And it will get you started. If there are things you don't like, you can suggest improvements. For example, this this ug and u argument. That's one you have to decide on. That's not a, not a very simple one. Anybody have any comments? I hope though that this was useful for you because, especially as students in the Y when she, are you finding that you probably know a lot in some ways? You know a lot more about English than Chinese. Is that right? A lot of you know a lot more about English than you know about Chinese, and you could say, well, I'm not in the Chinese department. It doesn't matter. How can we answer that argument? Number one, absolutely. Number one is your native speaker of Chinese, and you should know more about it. Then you say, "Well, it's not your job. You're in the foreign language department." How can we answer that? Well, what in addition?、Uh, what other benefits are there in addition to saying that? Well, yes, I'm a native speaker. I should know a lot about my native language. What else that concerns us here in this class and in your other English classes? What concerns it? What Argument can we give for saying why it's important to know more about your native language? If you want to do the translation or teach foreigner Chinese, you will, you will, you will need an assistant. All right, that's number two reason. If you are going to have any exchange with foreigners who are interested in Chinese, if you're going to do translation, you need it. What else? Not just that. Even if you're just staying within the realm of foreign language department classes. A lot of things you don't really fully understand in English until you understand what you do in Chinese. For a lot of things, I say, "Well, you do this in Chinese, don't you?" You go, "Oh yeah." For example, 短句，中文的短句的规则跟英文差不多。But why do so many foreign language students read English like they're like on a jet, Brrr, no stop at all, and it's very hard to understand? Would you do that when you speak Chinese or read Chinese? No. So the more aware you are of what you do normally in your own language, the better you're going to be able to learn English, and you will understand the connections. 然后你不会讨厌那个英文怎么规则那么多 As soon as you realize you have similar rules in your own language, doesn't that make you more willing to accept what we do in English? Don't you think? You say we have to do this in Chinese. Well, why should English be easier? We do this in Chinese. Okay, 我可以接受英文也需要这样做 For example, 短句 as an example. Okay, so those are only a few of the reasons. The more you know about your native language, the more connections you make, and not just putting Chinese here and then English there, two different islands in the middle of the ocean. You need to make a lot of connections. All of them need to, to be, have wireless access so they can communicate with each other. And the more connections you can make, the deeper and the more fuller, the more filled out your understanding of language in general will be, and of both English and Chinese individually. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, you really need to know a lot more about your lang your native language. So I hope that this is sort of a start for you. This will help you be more aware of things you do in Mandarin. If you're dissatisfied with things, that's great. Propose something different based on your ears. Listening to yourself, what sounds right to your ears. Listening to what you hear other people do. I'm going to give you a 寒假作业 okay? 寒假作业 for everybody who comes back. If you don't come back, you're you're out free. Then 那就没话讲了 You're home free. Okay. So your 寒假作业 for everybody who comes back. The rest of you can do it even if you don't come back. But I can't check it. Your 寒假作业 is over your winter vacation. 
I want you, just write it down, even if you're not planning to come back. Write it down anyway. Okay. I want you to make three observations about language around you, language in use. A lot of you will be going home, for example, to central and southern Taiwan to be with your grandparents or your aunts and uncles for the New Year holiday. Is that right? You're going to hear all kinds of language variation. You're going to hear all kinds of interesting things in language. In the past, you'd say, ah, or something like that. But now you'll notice it as something interesting, not as something, just like I was saying before about my weird ball ball distinction. You'll notice, hey, they have a very special way of saying that. Or, Taizong the nigga way in, su shi. Taizong is a very special way in, some students have told me. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then ask somebody from Taizong. Maybe they can explain it. Or the way little children speak. Or the way people who have a Hakka background speak. Even if they're just speaking Mandarin. All right? Anything that you notice, even if it's not directly phonetics, anything about language, language use, words, vocabulary, grammar, all of that is on the table. Everything is in play. So three observations about language. Write them down. Don't just kind of remember them in your head because I can tell you from experience, not just because of my age, we forget things. And once you forget something like that, you may never get it back and it'll bother you the rest of your life. It happens. So I know that I have to write everything down. So write it out, and then the first class next semester, we're going to share our observations that you've collected over your winter vacation. Now, the real purpose of this is to get you to start listening more carefully and start treasuring everything that you hear. It's an experience that we have as humans on this earth. To walk this earth is a big privilege. And the more that you notice the little things of life, the little things are really the big things of what it is to be human. You know, we're not just perfect spirits who have nothing to do all day, who don't have to eat or drink or go to the bathroom. We're people who do weird and funny things every day. And that is the precious thing about life, one of the biggest precious things about life. So listen carefully, you know, be involved, notice things that you yourself do. Write them down, three observations for next semester. In addition, this is not going to be required, but because most of you are in the Y when she, and I believe all of you want to keep working on your English and your other languages, like French, Japanese, Czech, whatever it is you're studying, I encourage all of you to Yangtzeng, 10 minutes a day, echo method. As described in the first two articles that you've read for this class, the Da Shi Kai Jiang, the Tou Liang Pian, they told you how to do 10 minutes a day of echo practice. If you do more than 10 minutes, you won't have time and you'll just not want to do it because we as humans are very, very lazy. Our brains really want to make life as easy as possible for us. 10 minutes a day, make the effort and listen carefully. Do echo method, at least listen carefully to English or your other foreign language. 10 minutes every day, you will improve because a lot of the problems in Taiwan English, and you know there are a lot of problems now, right? Now you are aware of what some of them are. A lot of them could be fixed if people used the listening approach rather than just 死背单字用你自己发明的发音, and then 背句型, and then 考试你的选择题, and that's it. That's your English. There's hardly any sound involved in that whole process, the way it is often done in Taiwan. If you want to 突破, if you want to transcend that and do better, you need sound coming into your ears every day. And not just going by. It's not turning on ICRT in the background. You need to hear something interesting over and over and over again until it's stuck in your subconscious or your unconscious. And then it's yours. And then that will help you improve everything in your English because it's like models that you've stored up that you can use for comparison. So I encourage you, this is required, is the three observations, but I highly encourage everybody to do 10 minutes a day. And if you are already really happy with your English, use your 10 minutes a day for your French or for your Vietnamese or Turkish or whatever it is you're learning. 10 minutes every day. It will help your overall sensitivity to any language in addition to improving that particular language you're learning. All right, does anybody have any final questions, comments? The bell has rung, we need to go. Anybody have anything to say, ask? Okay, we'll see you all at the final exam.